Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Today, I would like to talk further about the latest information we got on base building at this year's CitizenCon. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members for making these videos possible. Thank you so much for the support. And if you do appreciate my videos, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. So during the Destination Adventure panel at CitizenCon this year, towards the end of this panel, they spoke further about base building and what their plans are for the players. Now, they referred to base building as the future of Star Citizen, which certainly describes just how important this system is for Star Citizen and for CIG, which is definitely great to hear, as for many of us, including myself, it is just as exciting and important. So it kicked off with a short video of a group of people, players, NPCs, whatever, set on the planet of Microtech. And as you see the text appear on the bottom left, the words land claim site were revealed. And as the video continues on, you see these holographic representations of various building types appear and become actual structures connected to one another to show off a very small variety of potential options that we will see as this system comes along from circular buildings, entrances, industrial structures, solar panels, connecting structures like tunnelways, farming modules, medical wings, and of course, much more. Now they explained how base building will consist of two main elements. We have planning ahead and on site. And the planning section begins with a goal. What do you want from your base? Is it to be a home where you can just enjoy a nice view? Will it be a career-focused location, like a trading post where you can craft and sell items? Is it used for gathering local resources or living off-grid away from, say, the UEE and other civilians? And basically being fully self-sufficient. Now, hearing them say this is music to my ears. And all of those reasons sound great to me. I especially want to have an SRV and gather wrecks that people or players or NPCs leave lying around, creating a salvage yard for players to come and just buy components and vehicles and haggle with me over the price. That would just be phenomenal. Now, when they talk about building and crafting, this is all done via blueprints and requiring materials or resources. Everything in game will be fabricated from a blueprint and these blueprints can be gained via reputation rewards, mission rewards, or even rare shopkeepers. Not to mention looting players. You may find a blueprint from an abandoned old settlement or on a player that you killed or while looting a location as well. You could even board another person's ship or explore a derelict ship and come across these items. They are physical collectible items in the, in the world, it seems, that could show up anywhere. And imagine finding one for a rare item. That would be quite an achievement, I feel. But I think in order to generally unlock the best blueprints, it'll be done via missions and earning reputation with certain organizations like ship manufacturers, which we will talk about in a second. Now, they also say that any blueprint, you can do research on them and create different variants. And all items that you want to craft will require a recipe of resources and materials that you can collect around the verse in various ways, like shopping, resource gathering, or from very specific locations and will range from common unrefined resources to very complex components. Now, next he spoke about how the different locations will offer different pros and cons. For example, in a system like Stanton, you will need to purchase the land from either Stanton or say Artcorp or whoever owns that land. And then once you own the land, you will have shielding and turrets of varying types. Plus an NPC security force will show up to help protect you and your location but the trade-offs being that you will have to pay taxes and fees for this land and service. And if you fail to pay, then the shielding will go away over time and the location can become derelict and just collapse. And these locations can cost quite a bit, but offer little risk, but also little financial return, likely due to the land already having been stripped of resources by the governing body that you're buying it from. So that is what is known as high security for these land claims, Next, they talk about low security. So this would be owned by an independent corporation, a gang or a faction. And it also comes with a purchase cost, maybe not as much as the high security locations, but this will provide partial security help. So the base will be a little bit more vulnerable to attack, but NPCs will show up and help to defend it. And for a low security location, this will offer medium rewards, 
with a medium cost. So this, I presume, will be if you, say, earn enough reputation with a local gang and want to live amongst them or within their territory, as we did here, gangs will have territories and there could be big turf wars kicking off, uh, but you could purchase the land from them with them offering a little protection and potentially some rewards like resource gathering as they may not have been as thorough at harvesting the land as a governing body would like the UEE. And then we have the no security or lawless locations like Pyro, for example, which requires no land claim. There is no costs associated with it. No one officially owns this land. It is pretty much no man's land, which means no protection aside from the defenses that you have built, but a potential high payout and reward because it could be completely untouched by civilians. So for example, you could find a location in Pyro with a huge amount of gold and you can just set up shop, build an outpost, get mining, uh, and hope that nobody comes along to challenge you for that. Now here they do talk a little bit more about the various defenses that you can have, like AA turrets being both missiles or guns. You can have anti-personnel turrets as well, plus shields, which looked like they completely cover the base that you have built and hopefully will potentially expand, I guess, as you build bigger locations. Maybe you'll need a shield generator. And I would assume that in order for the enemy to get through these shields, they either need to deal enough damage to penetrate or disable them, which I suspect will take quite a lot of effort, or sabotage them. So having someone stealth into a base location on foot, set explosives and so forth, and then blow them up before sending in the big guns, which I think will lead to some pretty epic battles and fights between orgs and factions, planning and working together, getting a lay of the land, doing research and recon on the location that you're planning to attack and then sending in people to take out the defenses before the main group can come in. That would be pretty damn amazing. Now, once we have got the land claim, how do we build bases? Now, they are making sure that there are options for both solo players and orgs and building can range from a small single person surveying tool like this little hover trolley vehicle which can build small structures. So ideal for those who just want to be left alone, loading one of these surveyor tools into the back of your ship as they look very small, even smaller than the mule it seems, and then deploying it on location. And as you can see, it is tiny, which means even solo ships like a Nomad can hold one in its cargo hold, making it accessible to many players. Next is what looks to be an additional variant of the Atlas platform, which is used for vehicles like the Ballista. Uh, and this can build small and medium sized buildings and it looks like it will be deployed in some way once it is driven on site. Maybe it folds out and opens up, allows you the ability to build. Now the RSI Galaxy ship will allow you to build small, medium and large structures, which is great as this will be one of the new modules that was yet to be revealed. Uh, and what is also great is that it's stated on the ship panel that after the ship team finished the Polaris, the Galaxy will be next then followed by the Perseus. Instead of it being the Polaris, the Perseus, the Galaxy, which I thought would be the rollout plan, it'll be the Polaris, which is heavily in, in development now, then the Galaxy. And then of course the Pioneer from Consolidated Outland, which can build buildings of any size up to extra large. Uh, and he also says it will still work as a mobile base and they will discuss some of the upcoming features that they will add to the Pioneer later on. Also, they did say they are exploring what can be done in space for base building, not just on the planet. So do expect some pretty significant outcomes here. It is magnificent to hear this. I would assume things like stations ranging in size would be pretty cool, but I don't want to speculate too much and I'll leave it up to them to give us the information first. So when it comes to claiming land, you basically put down a tool wherever you want to claim this land and launch a drone that is built into the machine and then this will allow the player to access both the building mode and the land claim mode. And when you're in land claim mode, the player can change the size and position of what the area that you want to claim is. So gone will be the 4x4 and 8x8 land claims, I suppose. I wonder if they'll give us a different version of this as they did sell those in 2017. Uh, and this will then show you the cost and taxes of that piece of land. And so if you are in a taxable zone and you don't own the land, it will default to the land claim mode. Whereas if you are in a lawless area or say you've bought the land, the drone will then default to the base building mode with an overhead view of the land where you'll be able to place down buildings where you want as holograms, I would think, so that you can see how they look and how the layout is before actually constructing them. 
and then you will see the resources beneath the surface as well. Now, this will also show you the resources that you will need in order to build these structures, like what's required as the recipe for this. And you'll be able to switch between different modes, which shows you the resource network. So power management and whatnot, showing you how you would link power to the buildings. And you will be able to move or deconstruct buildings with no charge. Now, once you have built the buildings, they will be empty with no furnishings if you haven't brought any with you. If you put a couch in the back of your nomad, then you can throw that in. But if you don't, then you will want to build a fabricator. And these fabricators will range in size depending on what you want to build. From decorations, armor, weapons, components, and they say even ships, which we will come back to later on in the video. But going back to blueprints, you will need these to craft anything and everything you want, provided you have the actual resources for the recipe. And they did state that the quality and stats of the fabricated item will depend on the quality of the materials used. So hopefully there will be a skill element here as well. And if you are crafting items of exquisite quality, then you will be able to sell them for more than someone who's just putting stuff together for the sake of it. And then once you've fabricated something, you will then be able to place those items in whatever room you want. You could always go to various shops around the verse and buy furniture if you didn't want to fabricate it yourself. So do expect a wide range of styles and designs for everything you could want uh, and likely all tied into the location as well and the law, like we see with clothing and such. Furniture bought from Pyro versus Stanton versus Terra will likely all be different. And to place an item inside your building, this can either be done in first person, so visually place it as you are walking around, or via a dedicated mode, which is using the surveyor tool. So pretty much the best of both worlds. Now, moving on to building types. These will range from utility buildings like garages, freight elevators, landing pads, and storefronts. Great to see them utilizing the elevators as well, so that we can actually store vehicles in our homes rather than having to leave them at landing zones. There will be extractors like mining lasers, drills and pumps, water extractors and so on. And these are not going to be fully automated, which is somewhat a shame, but I understand why they're doing it, as they want players to be engaging with their things and not just leaving them to do things while they don't play, basically. And the resources that you are extracting could be, say, radioactive, perishable, and much more, as we heard during the cargo update segment. And as these extractors work away, they will be filling up containers with these resources that you will need to either do something with, sell, distribute, and so on. And these devices will need repair and maintenance, as they will also be suffering from wear and tear, misfires, damage, and so forth. So you will have to make sure they are okay, and they will also have upgrade paths to make them either more efficient or resilient. Now, power generators are another building type from things like geothermal, solar panels, fuel generators, windmills, fusion power and batteries that you can use to store excess power. So if you have a power cut or something happens, you can use a battery as a backup. And these will vary in way of being more or less effective in certain areas, like cost, for example, depending on the location as well. Some will work better than others. Uh, if you are obviously building solar panels and it is in a perpetually dark area of a planet, it wouldn't really be that beneficial. Then there are producer type buildings like fabricators, as we know, allowing you to craft products to sell, hydroponics, which is essentially farming, refineries to refine the resources you have mined, and pharmaceuticals, which will be for things like medical equipment that you can craft to help or sell, uh, but also narcotics. You can create drugs, have a drugs lab, sell those to certain, you know, we. the potential is huge there. And then finally, there are defenses like AA turrets, anti-personnel turrets, and shield generators. I do expect we will see a lot more of these types expand based on what else they create, what we ask for, and so on. So it'll have a starting point, and then more will come along. And the big news, or the biggest news about this whole presentation, is that this base building work is going into full production in quarter one of next year, so 2024. So we will watch it begin to take shape and evolve over the course of next year. Hopefully with some of it coming in, we will see. I know they said they wanted Nix, the Nix system, to sort of debut this. So we'll see if they bring it in earlier. I don't think they need to wait for the Nix system, but it already depends on how long it takes anyway. 
Now, there is a lot in this whole panel to break down, and all of it sounds above and beyond what I have ever wanted. The one thing that really shocked me, though, was shipbuilding, as it was never planned to allow players to fully build ships. Now, I won't delve into it too much, as we have very little information on how this will work exactly and what the limitations will be, but I presume that if you gain a blueprint for, say, a Gladius by building up reputation with Aegis Dynamics, which I would assume would take quite a while, then you could potentially craft the chassis and the body and then add the weapons and components yourself. I really don't know for sure, as there are so many grey areas here, like quality assurance. What if you use crappy materials and then you taint the name of Aegis Dynamics? Will the integrity of the ship hull be lesser than one that you bought brand new or used better materials? Can you add modifications to it? Can you sell all of these ships to players? We really need to learn more about this before talking about it too much, as there are more questions than answers. But do not expect to be putting ships together like you can in Starfield. Ships in Star Citizen are more like real-world vehicles, and they will likely have a strict ruling on what can be done and how we do this. But what we heard about base building, fabricating, all of this stuff, it is going to be like no other game in terms of range and scale and quality. Not to mention how cool it will be to build up a location while the day-night transitions, weather rolls in and out, creatures come around, other players, NPCs, gangs, also paying players to bring you resources if you run out. And if resources are finite on planets like CIG say, which is another conversation on itself, then we will see things like gold rushes popping up in locations where many players flock to to take advantage of building various buildings and bars, trading posts, and then once those resources are depleted, the players will pretty much vanish just as quick as they appeared, leaving a deserted ghost town behind that over time becomes derelict and taken over by the landscape for players to find years later on. Now this is going to be a game changer for Star Citizen that will provide endless gameplay for so many players and people even if you are not directly involved in the building process itself, as scouting locations and explorers finding interesting locations and selling the coordinates using the new star map. Resources will need to be hauled back and forth to and from buildings, selling the goods that have been crafted there or harvested there or the resources needed to build those buildings. Security will be required to protect these locations. Obviously, you could have turrets and whatnot, but having an actual security presence there of players will be the utmost secure locations there are. And then, of course, repairing anything and everything around a settlement. Now, I see myself having all of the above, a small shack on a mountaintop, a salvage yard along a busy trade lane, and a huge settlement with a headquarters for my org, uh, where we can make millions and organize our operations. There is going to be no limit to what this system can bring, and I am over the moon to hear it is entering full development next year. That was probably one of the biggest shocks this year at CitizenCon. But with that said, I have plenty more videos to come covering everything we saw at this year's incredible CitizenCon. So if you did enjoy this video, please do consider subscribing, helping us reach that 60,000 subscriber mark. We are also delving into everything that we saw at CitizenCon over on Twitch, talking much further than I can here and bouncing ideas off of each other. It is twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. You are all more than welcome over there. And a big thank you to everyone for the support on there as well. That is insane. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. It does the channel a big favor. And tick that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.